I've been busy for the last so many hours getting everything together and I just did a tally. I've got a, probably the best part of around four and a half thousand files to marry up in the evidence that I've gathered. So it's, yeah, a kind of tedious task. Uh, I need to take a break every now and again, which is why I do these videos in between because gives my eyes a bit of a break and also my hands and I get to give you a bit of an update too because there's as I'm putting it all together too like uh, when I first started to put it together I thought I had exhausted every possible means of finding any information I had gone to um, certain Facebook pages and tried to actually um, go down the group page or the page or the profile and find the posts that I wanted and kept erroring out so um, so I thought well that's not going to work so what I did was um, I followed my curiosity which is always how I end up finding something that I don't know how I ended up finding it but I ended up looking for something and I ended up discovering that well you know the best way to find these was through the images because the images and the videos that a group or a page may have so that you can access those things that usually they put a little bit of a post with it or something like that too and it also dates it so there was a lot of information that uh, I was actually able to fill in the blanks like you know I only knew of a certain number of freedom summits but there have been other uh, what would you call them meetings gatherings <laughs> lectures um yeah in between where there is this constant um push of selling this product that the the truthology sells because truthology started with mark darwin well before uh, i think it probably would have been about 2008 or no probably even earlier than that um, con I haven't found that c a conclusive date yet but I'd say at least 2007 maybe 6 and but not much of that is actually public up until he starts forming his truthology and that's when AB became his partner Adrian Brennock became his partner early 2002 and from there, there was a series of, um, you know, come sp spend the evening or they would fly to Melbourne or <laughs> for a talk. And the last Freedom Summits that they had, you know, I think it was in 2015, they actually had a pay-per-view for it. <laughs> So if you couldn't fly down and be there for it or whatever, you could pay per view. And I think that was something like, uh, oh, $29, I think. I could be wrong. Don't quote me. So just as I had started to formulate the list of the information that I had, when I discovered this, I virtually... Um, well I filled in a lot of blanks a lot because once you are able to establish a timeline and people's movements in the timelines and who was doing what with who <laughs> yes it becomes a lot easier to then explain how that then the next actions that fit in together are also associated there's yeah a lot that I've been doing you know I keep telling people about this stuff behind the scenes one day you will see the end result I am 
<laughs> not a fast worker. I do not have a secret secretary. I don't have anyone to proofread my work. And when I produce work, um, I've always known that. So I pretty much have to know. I've got a way of double checking everything and making sure that it's a process. Like anything, it's a process and it needs to be um, methodically done, I suppose because I do not have the luxury of making a mistake and having someone else pick it up. So, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> the reason that I was, I got sidetracked uh, and I, I was glad to have a bit of a break to give my eyes and my hands a bit of a rest because, um, yeah, you know, as you get older, the body doesn't work as well as what it used to. <laughs> But uh, yeah, anyway, so I got sent this post and it's like, no, oh, not another one of Mark McMurtry. Here he goes again. And it's like, he it, it just keeps saying the same stuff. And it's just, you know, he can't shake it up. But then he still always makes me laugh because you get down here and he goes, most likely because I am upfront and honest oh wow I cracked up laughing when I first heard that it's like wow mate you are lucky you are not Pinocchio you would you would not be able to walk anywhere with that nose so long you'd be tripping over it in fact you you <laughs> you need an arborist to keep cutting it off <laughs> now I'm going to make a confession here I did another video on this and after I did it I thought you know what maybe I should have given him a dick of the day or dick of the week or something like that award and then I'm thinking no can't because you know what for the consistency that he has shown over such a period of time the consistency in his slanderous and defaming comments against others, in his lack of actually achieving anything. I mean, where's the OSTF's achievement page? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I'm going to try and keep it together a little bit more and not crack up so much because it does make me laugh I mean the thing is that you know people like you Mark McMurtry haven't realized that there are grown-ups in the world <laughs> and they are just sick and tired of seeing grown-up kids you haven't learned anything you're carrying on like a spoiled little brat you're calling people names yeah, calling them out, come over here and I'll beat you up and I'll, you know. Or in this case, come to the law grounds and take your medicine for your lies. Wow, I like those laws. That sounds like a bit like a kangaroo court. A bit rigged to me. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like the judge and jury has already decided guilty because we'd be going there to get our medicine and we know what that medicine is because AB and you know Mark McMurtry here describe it very well don't they the tribal love with the little hand beating down and the little skin emoji you remember those AB so the implied threat in this come to the law grounds repeat your filth and lies he says to concerned law people oh, <laughs> and notice he doesn't say legitimate and uh, then once you do that you show up to the law grounds and take their medicine for their lies so in other words you don't want anything to do with law you just want all of us to show up there so you can give us a beating we can take your medicine I mean, were you dropped on your head as a baby? So rather than give out for his typical comments 
<laughs> thought I was going to keep it together. Because, <laughs> you know, he, he goes here, the world has seen. What do you think the world revolves around you or that the world even gives a shit you know, about what's going on? around you, Mark McMurtry. I know you think you're pretty important <laughs> up there, king on your hill, and your $36 million development while the OSTF is out there going, we've got no money, can you give us some? And you're been living rent-free on a $36 million investment that has business profits that also feed back in. And you also got the the hemp farm too, haven't you? And all the other businesses. Yes. You're sitting pretty, aren't you, mate? Tell me, how did you get yourself into that position? Was it through your hard work? When was the last day you actually did a day's hard work? Do you even know what hard work is? You know, I could imagine you on the fishing boat that you're the lazy bastard that sat back and watched everybody else doing shit. That's how you get so fat, isn't it? Oh, no, that's not fat. That's beer gut, isn't it? Sorry. <laughs> and because of that, you can't, can only waddle around and you can't do too many jobs because you can't bend over. But, you know, alcoholism is actually a problem. And you could get on a disability pension for that. Oh, maybe you already are. Hmm. But he wouldn't tell you that, would he? Because that's none of your business. You can't even find out about ordinary things. Like, you ring up a business and you go, what do you, what do, you do for business? What do, you, what do you do for business? Now, how many of those businesses turn around and go, well... I'm not going to tell you who are you. It's like your public, your advertising, and I'm asking questions. <laughs> you know what have we called the um, you know, the bottom register of the IQ scale? You know, come on. But instead of giving him a, a Mark McMurtry a Dick of the Week or Year Award. I thought it far better to award him for... Mm, you know how they give Man of the Year? Well, I'm going to say his failure of the decade. Because, well, he's failed the OSTF. He's failed the tribes. But on the other side... He's sitting pretty on a $36 million development. He hasn't paid rent in three years. And <laughs> seriously, I wonder how many people... Have you got a ring, Mark McMurtry? Do people kiss it when they come and visit you? <laughs> yeah, I wonder which ring they do kiss. I've seen plenty of uh, ring kissing on here from some of your OSTF groupies actually make me want to gag. That they're actually very embarrassing to think that human beings are like that, to be so caught up. But then you can't be unkind because this is an extremist, political, um, domestic terrorist group. It's got a cult mentality and like all cults, they have this entrancement that draws in those that can be manipulated and used and there to worship, you know, worship, be the support of, give him the crown light. He's the one that keeps bringing up the crown, nobody else, him. He's the one that keeps, like to all of the lying crown serving agents, idiots. Yeah, I say agents because he's called others indigenous agents because all you have to do to be called any of these names and a lot, lot more is to disagree with Mark McMurtry or not even disagree with him. Just ask him a question. And when he doesn't answer it, ask him back again well, yes, 
but you didn't answer the question, could you answer the question? You're just going to get nothing but an earful of abuse. And he's had quite a, a habit of doing this over the last so many years. I mean, you know, for as much as what um, people have said that AB's defamed and slandered them, well, Mark McMurtry is the one that has slandered and defamed all these people the most. And he's sitting on a $36 million development. Hmm. And, you know, I think that all those people out there that have been defamed by Mark McMurtry, you know, I wonder how much that would be worth in a class law action. He's got money. He's got an asset. <laughs> uh, so why not hold him accountable for all his lies? I mean, he can prove that all these things that he's saying are true because, you know, I've got no worries about... Uh, bringing the stuff I've got. <laughs> you never found out what it was, did you? You poor bugger. Yeah. You know, one of the things I actually hear people say, and I heard it just recently, a comment someone said about, you know, these people are so nice, you know, I met them and they were so nice. Well, then, yeah, yeah they got screwed over by well, Mark McMurtry, but, you know, sticking up for Sammy and Samuel McMurtry and David Cole saying they're nice. And it's like, oh, wow, people are so gullible. You know, maybe it's because my dad was an alcoholic and he'd run out of money. So, you know, alcoholics lie, con, steal, deceive. I mean, trust me. Anyone that has had alcoholic parents at all will know exactly what I'm talking about when I say that it's pretty hard after a certain period of time to put one on over me. And when I say that, I mean my dad, smooth, so nice. Butter wouldn't melt in his mouth. And all his mates would sing his praise too. And yeah, he would be that way to us kids. But he was a lousy father. He was never there. He was always at the pub. And when he ran out of money, <laughs> he'd come and steal our pocket money. You know, big deal, 20 cents. But, you know, we didn't have that much money. No one did back in those days. And everything, yeah, was budgeted. <laughs> but they are salesmen like drug addicts like alcoholics like so many that are addicted to certain things they are excellent con men <laughs> I, I know that people out there know exactly what I'm talking about in some cases you know that they're not telling you this, the true story, but you can sit there and you can watch them telling you this story and you're thinking, have they realised that it's that obvious that they're full of shit and they don't even have a clue what they're talking about? So you've got to laugh at Mark McMurtry and on the other hand, You've got to admire his tenacity. After 10 years of failure, he's still singing the same song. But, you know, I'm sorry, but I just got to spit it straight out. Any of you tribes that are got anything to do with him, you're stupid. Down outright stupid. And... I would actually say that you deserve what is coming to you because 
he will do nothing but fail you, fail you and fail you. He has had 10 years of failure and guess what? You can look forward to another 10 years. But how much are you going to fork over on the promise that, you know, maybe in those next 10 in these next 10 years you'll win something because I mean, it worked all the other times and it's going to have to work one time. No, it isn't. It doesn't matter how many times you send a crazy into court, he's still going to come out of court with the same conclusion. Case dismissed. But then again, I suppose it's only a matter of time before it's not case dismissed, it's contempt of court, like Samuel McMurtry found out. <laughs> yeah, you want to give lip to the law people in the Australian courts. You know, you should show respect to all cultures, not just what you've picked out as being profitable for you on your $36 million development, where you can sit there as king on your hill and call people in. To, <laughs> and you know your, what you're doing, Mark McMurtry. And I don't even know how you could even sleep at night with all the lies and the deceit that you cover up with all the hate that you put out there into the world <laughs> well the world may not have noted and been watching but enough in the right places have been watching Mark McMurtry not only you but AB Mark Darwin Hmm. Dare say Derek Zillman, Philip Dixon, Cherie Stakes, you're all in there too. Well, of course you would be. You know, if I can piece it together that there's a criminal organisation and people are working together, <laughs> really? Do you think that nobody else can? And, you know, seeing that case that took nine years for them to actually get all the evidence together to finally get them. And you know it's the ATO, they won't give up. They'll just keep going until they get what they want. So I'm really glad, AB, that the ATO is one of your creditors because they'll keep going until they get what they want because how many millions could you have funneled because looking at the number of prospective people that you could have had go through there, seeing the way that it's structured, that just to put in an expression of interest is going to cost you money. Just to be on the first list to be considered. Then to get on to the second one. And then if you're not good enough, well, all that money's just blown, isn't it? But the good news is that just before Christmas, the past lost investors were told, fill out a form by the end of January. And um, it looks like, well, the court has validated a lot of the claims and the legitimacy. So in a, a lot of circumstances, it's just a matter of making sure that that form is in by the 29th of January and you're going to get your money back. And by the way that it seems to have been going to be done is that it will not be, that there will not be enough funds. So you should get a complete distribution from the liquidation of 3222 and its funds. And then once you get that paid back, that is wrongs righted. And some other wrongs will never be righted, but you can take other avenues. And I would consider carefully any options that you would take in those areas, considering that Adrian Brennock is a bankrupt with no assets has no value, has no real 
value. <laughs> Sorry, AP, you're a bankrupt. You're worth nothing, dude. I know you're worth heaps, but not officially, are you? I mean, that's distributed around all those companies through Nyepi and uh, the share holdings, Rainmaker Group holdings, and all these other different, yeah, your cannabis industries, all of these things. And you know, it's interesting that when you put it in a time flow manner, you can almost see that people are sitting in the same place on the same day at the same computer, because yeah, you can do it all online these days. And just making up a few businesses and then you take those business details into the accountant and the solicitor or wherever you're getting the money put in. You start up little accounts so that you can move it in-house in the lawyer or the accountant's place. And nobody knows where you're moving that money around to. It's kind of like, you know, the three cups, which one's the pee under? They move it around until which one's it under? Nobody knows and nobody will know because... They don't keep proper records. Well, that's what they would tell the court. That's what they have told the court. That's what AB's told the court, that there's no proper records. Well, every single one of these country companies associated with the members, except for the ones associated with Richard Moat, are um, all handled by Medoras Accounting. As the registered office... And they've been handling the books for all these companies to make sure that everything's going from book to book to book. Because one of the unsubstantiated things that uh, I would need someone to have taken a picture that would show me that Cannabis Industries Australia actually had in the vicinity of somewhere like 800,000 parked in its account, just sitting out of the way. When someone inquired on what what was going on with that money, hmm, just been parked out of the way. See, when you've got all these companies that are controlled in one place like they are with an accountant or a lawyer, everything's just on paper. And between... Like everything would go to a trust account and then it would just get dispersed to matters. And it's easy enough to move it on paper and put it somewhere else. You don't need physical people to do it. You just need someone that can do the paperwork to do it. An accountant or a lawyer, they've, they use both. And here I was starting off my <laughs> failure of the decade award and I end up into giving you all the, the latest nitty gritty on, you know, what's going on. The one thing I haven't mentioned though is Adrian Brennock's bankruptcy. There has been good news there too. It uh, seems like the trustee is upholding his end of the bargain, his job to make sure that things are done by the law. The trust that he is given as trustee to do the right thing. So I'd have to say, you know, well done. <laughs> because... Uh, yeah, the past lost investors were looking at smiles for the new year. It's a little bit different at Nightcap because it's falling apart in lots of areas, isn't it, boys? You know, I, I give Mark McMurtry failure of the decade because he's achieved nothing in 10 years. I've achieved more in three or four months than he's done in his whole damn life, I bet you more positive for anybody. Things that will end up being lasting. And I've got a determination to not stop until I have achieved what I've set out to do. 
There's going to be people standing on the other side of bars by the time I'm done. <laughs> of that, well, I'm going to make sure. Because I'm going to leave no stone unturned. Just when I think I've found everything, I find more. I couldn't believe how much I found when I was just looking for something to add to what I was getting together with all the evidence. And I just stumbled across, well, in some respects, the mother load. And it was so obvious too, because there was so much about the dating and the sequence of events that, you know, there was too many different opinions on it. You know, I've got, I've shared the copies of all the documents that I've received in the past, but I haven't been able to share and update a lot of them because they've come through so thick and fast. I mean, wow. I just checked it out before and I reckon I've got probably over 4,000 items that yeah, it's tedious work, <laughs> but it's also rewarding to, to bring all that, I suppose you could call it chaos, because in the folders it means nothing, but then to bring it together in order so that it shows what you want it to show and it's easily seen. And that's what you call here as factual evidence. And that's where I'll present it to, in court, in the Australian Law Court. And I will go to the tribal law courts too, or well, they don't have courts. I will go to the tribal law grounds. I will go to the law grounds where you claim your skin name came from where you have said to have gone through law because I would not disrespect the Walpuri to even think that you would even assume to be having it on someone else's grounds and not your own. But then again, what is your own ground? I mean, you, yeah. <laughs> you're like a fair weather friend. You just keep floating around from one place to another, don't you? Which one are you? I don't know, now I'm over here. Now I'm a little bit upset, Mark. Very, I'm, I'm really, really very disappointed. Could I put on a fake cry and sound like I'm upset? I'm just crying, oh. How come Alkin Homer and David Rourke get two mentions? Hmm? Have we fallen to the bottom of the list? Have I failed? <laughs> I couldn't fail as much as you, mate. I tell you what, 10 years of failure. You know, only a fool would believe in anything you're selling. So now I've had my fun and I've had my distraction from all the paperwork. I don't feel so cross-eyed from, you know, <laughs> staring at the, the screen all the time. And, uh, yeah, I'll leave my uh, failure of the decade. <laughs> Mark McMurtry. Yeah. Seriously. You know, it would actually be a little bit more interesting if you just changed up you spiel. You know, every good salesman needs to move with the times. You need to realise that the only one that's after a crown is you. And it's never going to happen, mate. You don't know it yet, but you have already failed again. The $36 million development you sit on, that'll be, mm, we'll make the most of it. Because, you know, there's one thing I am sure of. 
life never stays the, the same. It changes. It will always change. That is the way of nature. Change. And that's why a lot of people have not liked what they went through in 2020 because there was a lot of change. They had found themselves in a state of complacency where they were lulled into this world of day in, day out, and it was safe, nothing changed. But you see, that's not nature. We have seasons, we have days, we have hours. Everything cycles and changes. Some on small scales, some on bigger scales. Some aren't noticeable, some are really noticeable. But there is always change. And if you try and fight that change, well, it's going to be bad. The only way that it's not is if you actually manifest the reality by taking charge of it yourself. Like right now, Mark McMurtry, you just don't realise what a vulnerable position you are sitting on. A $36 million <laughs> development. And you have commented so many slanderous and defamation oh, so much from what I've seen and I know you've been doing it for years I've had people send me stuff from years ago it's it's there and seriously if people were to print out the number of comments from different people you couldn't have enough boxes in the courtroom for them to look at. That's how many people he's insulted over the years and have kept a record. And then every dog has his day. You just don't know that yours is done. And you know pride comes before a fall. AB can't fall far, he's a bankrupt. And he's going to do everything he can to try and squirm out of, oh, it's only a marketing job. I'm not doing anything other than being an employee. Yeah, try the other one. That's, that's not going to wash. <laughs> There's too much stuff out there to show exactly what you're up to. Half of it's come out of uh, Mark Darwin's mouth too. You know, it's a pity that he can't access those channels. He's hidden all the other ones. And, you know, I can't believe when I looked on the Wayback Machine, the ones that he only just recently hid, I knew about. But there's a whole other lot on there that he has hidden as well. And the thing is that I've already got the links and everything to show that these videos come up as private. So if Mark Darwin deletes them now, when that evidence comes forward, the court will ask, why did you delete them? It will also be pointed out that you concealed and hid them on your channel. Well, one, to avoid them being seen during other legal proceedings where it wouldn't be good if people had evidence to prove their allegations, would it? So he hit all those ones. And when it comes down to it too, Mark Darwin, mate, I'd like to give you one chance. But, you know, I've seen what you've been up to. I've seen how long you've been doing it and how many people. And yeah, I've seen that there are people that have had successes, but you know what? That was just dumb luck or just their good luck. It had nothing to do with skill or with being right. Now, the important thing too is that I saw a video from Mark Darwin where he was saying... It was done last year, 2000, no, not last year, 2019, 
where he said that the four-stage process wasn't working very much anymore because the courts had got wise to it, the solicitors had got wise to it, and it wasn't very effective anymore. They were still having some success with it, but yes, they're going to have to try and modify it. But the thing is, when they say, I need to try and modify it, what they're saying is, I need to try and find another loophole and another way to justify that loophole. That's, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> so, hey, yucked on it enough. <laughs> I was only going to make it a short one, but yeah, there's a there's a lot going coming together, and uh, it will probably make a lot more sense to other people too once I've been able to order it the way that I have, as I've found a um, way of well doing it so that it's accessible and it's private. And I can also easily duplicate it to a public forum to bring it out to show everybody else. I might have to edit, you know, a few things out because, you know, I understand as much as what people would say it's keeping secrets, it's not actually. There are some things that it's better left unsaid because... You, you know, you just don't want to tip your hand. It's far easier to have someone you know, shoot themselves in the foot than to have them get all spooked and go, ooh. Because we know none of you are going to get spooked. You think I'm telling slanderous comments and lies. <laughs> Oh, well, I suppose you could say there's actually thousands of things now to actually show. Mm, that might be a little bit hard for you to actually show that they are lies now. And it would be interesting too if you could bring out in court what you've done with all the donations and what you've actually done for the tribes in the OSTF. You know... An achievements page. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing at that because I found another. Um, Mark McMurtry's got another profile other than this one and the Mark McMurtry with a um, possum on it. He's got one as Michael McMurtry, except the Michael, the A and the E is back to front. And <laughs> go there and have a look. All it is is, I don't know, I don't play any of these games, but all these posts about playing pokies and games and there's no serious stuff on there. And, yeah, you know, the see, people on Facebook have to realise that it is a very public medium. And it's not just Zuckerberg that's watching you. It's everybody else. And, you know, people that don't even show their friends list, well, you know, they've got 60 likes on that. And you can only like if you're part of the friends list, so let's have a look. And you go through those and you find out, well... You don't need to keep your friends list private. <laughs> Some people have figured it out, though. You don't, yeah. You don't leave a like or a laugh. <laughs> Unless you mean to be discovered. <laughs> and yeah, I have to thank Facebook, too for providing me with so much evidence that I uh, and time flow that I could not have found in any other way. You know, because of the medium that they use, Facebook, to advertise all these things on, you get a minute-by-minute minute 
up-to-date thing on it. And uh, all you got to do is uh, start looking for the information. My advice to people is that if you can't find anything through the search, go to the um, images and start clicking on images. Because a lot of those posts are images that are just posted with comments to them. And flick through the images. See if anything catches your attention. And if it does, have a look. Think how these people think. Because um, they do post the same kind of things. It's very easy to actually get inside their head because they don't, they never change. Look at this. This post could have been done a month ago, <laughs> two months ago, three months ago. <laughs> and if I was around then, well, it could have been done 10 years ago too. Failed to simply provide any evidence, you, Mark McMurtry, have simply failed to provide any evidence whatsoever that you have achieved anything. Your mouth does a lot of talking. Your groupies do a lot of talking for you. But, you know, most people aren't going to bend over and kiss your feet. So, you know... <laughs> And why would we? Why would we want to appoint you our leader? Our king? Seriously, I've read history. I've seen more <clears throat> benevolent dictators than you. <laughs> yeah. And on that note, I'm going to leave my failure of the decade with a challenge. Oh, come on. You must have some success. Besides your $36 million development and all your cushy housing that you've had for free while you've been promising it to everybody else, but, well, now there's no money, is there? <laughs> wow, that's a common story with you guys, isn't it? People handing over money and it just disappears into fairyland. No. Goes into a trust account and gets moved around accounts on paper and then through the accounts at the bank and before you know it, yeah. Which which company is it in? Who took the money? Don't know. No records. Ask Medoras. <laughs> they know <laughs> and on that note I'm going to leave my short long video <laughs> I'll catch you next time take it easy